Hi, and welcome to Brown Coat Reviews. Now, I may not be what you were expecting to see if you subscribe to this channel and have been watching the videos regularly. I am the other half of Brown Coat Reviews, as my wife Laura, who is the usual host, likes to put it, her favorite co-host, her husband, Scott. I'm coming to you today because a few weeks ago we asked for um, you to put in your comments some of your guilty pleasures. Things like movies that don't have to mean anything, don't have to have any real artistic value of any kind, or something poignant that happens in the plot line. You just have a mood every now and then where you want to watch something that makes you laugh, entertains you in some way, whatever that is. Could be a book, could be a movie, could be a series. I think Laura's already shared with you earlier one of her guilty pleasures, Lady uh, Mechanica, and I'm here today to share with you one of mine. So first off, I'd just like to tell you that uh, one of my other passions, um, if comics are a hobby of mine, then one of my passions are animals, and more specifically, dogs. I've uh, been around them my whole life, had pets since I was very, very young. I actually am kind of a dog trainer as well. Um, I've, I've interacted and volunteered at shelters literally across the country from San Diego, California, Asheville, North Carolina, um, to local here in Wake Forest, where we are now. Um, they have always been a part of my life and a very important part of my life. I'm wearing a shirt here you might be able to see from one of the um, somewhat local, they're about 45 to minutes to an hour away, uh, Greyhound adoption groups. My wife, Laura, and I also foster um, Greyhounds now, and we have three Greyhounds of our own, whom you may have seen in some cameo appearances in some earlier videos, and you will be seeing in some more coming up. But one of my earliest memories um, from my childhood, besides pets, of things that I love to do, was wake up on Saturday morning and watch cartoons. Probably like the vast majority of you out there, one of my favorites of that time, and it might make sense, was actually Scooby-Doo. Uh, Scooby here, watching over my shoulder. A little, little Christmas adornment there for Scooby. Ruh -ruh. Shadow's watching. <laughs> Anyhow, Scooby um, combined several things. He combined just silly slapstick humor. Um, there was a team thing going on there. He was one of the many characters that was on the show, you know, with Mystery Ink Gang, right? Um, ghost and Goblin stories, which is always cool. But he also was a dog, right? So it combined a lot of things that I loved at that age. And I remained a fan even into my young adulthood, teenage years, all the way up. Uh, to the point where I still, like, I will have some Scooby Christmas ornaments and various things around the house. Um, one of those things, though, that I started when we got back into collecting recently, if you happen to glance over my shoulder here, was Scooby-Doo comic books. It's a guilty pleasure of mine, okay? It's something that I know pretty much what's going to happen probably by the time I get to the second page, right? But at the same time, I want to read it because it's fun. It's entertaining. It either makes me laugh. It makes me um, relate to something in my childhood again. It takes me down memory lane. For whatever reason, though, it doesn't have to make any sense whatsoever. It doesn't have to tie in anything that's going on in my life now as an adult with responsibilities. It's just a guilty pleasure to me because I can read it. And for those 20 minutes, I'm, I'm 12, 8, whatever, again. And I'm not thinking about, you know, life in essence. I'm just being entertained. So um, some of the titles that you can see here over my shoulder, we picked up at, I believe it was a comic, uh, Ultimate Comics Warehouse sale, uh, Scooby Apocalypse. So they're like all over the place. I've got like an issue five, a 16, a 17, and then we jump to like uh, issue 30 something up here. I will probably fill in some of these gaps. What I'd really like to do is get a trade. I just like to read them, like I said, and stop and start as I feel the need. Um, they're not really something that I'm going to collect for the covers necessarily. Um, that being said, though, something I did buy for the covers and the kind of collector's item of it, or collector status, these, which actually came from Xenoscope. Now, I know you've heard Laura talk about it. Um, there was a particular series that I read by them called Jungle Book. Kind of got me interested in them because of the way that they twist familiar stories to us and change it enough that makes it new and exciting. Well, they also had these. Um, I was either watching one of their shows or I was on their website, saw these and just had to have them. So you got Daphne and Velma up here. More modern, perhaps, you know, more grown up uh, version of them than the Saturday morning cartoon version, but still 
it was paying homage to them in, in a way that I just I had to have. And it combined some stuff that I really liked. Artwork, Scooby-Doo. Um, another one here that I picked up at a warehouse sale was a Scooby-Doo team-up with the man in red and blue himself. You see Wonder Woman down here in the corner as well, right? And then I also picked up this 100-page giant Scooby-Doo with six different stories. In it. I mean, it's awesome, first of all. Excuse me, nine different stories in it. Right. It's it's something that um, I hadn't really got into these giant issues before. And we purchased a giant issue. I think it was a Batman at first. And I was like, huh. So it's not quite a trade and it's not a single issue. I like it. So I saw this had to have it grab that one as well. All right. So I told you kind of part of the reason why I like Scooby Doo is because um, it reminds me of my childhood and watching cartoons on Saturday morning a more uh, frivolous or let's say I had less responsibility time in my life for sure. Um, one of the other reasons though, because I mentioned at the very beginning, my love for dogs, I used to have a Scooby of my very own. So if you know, if you watch the cartoons, Scooby was a Great Dane. And this is my boy, James, who was my very first Great Dane. Now he wasn't my first dog. I was in my late teens, early 20s. I think I was actually going to college at the time that I adopted him. Um, but I'd always wanted a big dog. Um, I just had kind of fallen in love with the idea of that presence that they have when they walk into the room. Not in the intimidation. Don't get me wrong. Like I've never been the type that feels like my dog is the extension of me or my car is the extension of me. I wasn't looking for an image thing. What I was looking for is like when a little dog sometimes comes in the room, Love them, by the way, small dog owners. But you might not notice if they don't make a noise or come right up to you and like put a paw on you, right? A large breed dog walks in a room. He doesn't have to talk to you, touch you, anything. You know they're in the room. If nothing else, when they hear that <laughs> when they lay down or when they <sighs> sigh and it sounds just like a human. In fact, it can freak out if you're like a, you know, by yourself in the apartment late at night, just finished watching a scary movie. You didn't know that the dog had walked from the other room into the bedroom, lays down to the foot of the bed and suddenly goes, <sighs> yeah, it's happened to me once. <laughs> it's probably happened to some of you out there, but the idea is their presence, their physical presence. When they jump on the bed, you know, they're on the bed. <laughs> you don't have to wonder. Okay. I wanted that. And I went out to a breeder uh, who was close to me and met James's litter. And this one, they all look like little rats, by the way. When I adopted him, so he went from like fingertip to just, just past, okay, maybe a here. So on my forearm, right? But he was tiny. He looked like a little rat with way too much skin. He had saggy little skin. He had long floppy ears. He had big feet. And that was it. And out of this little mass of squirming, wriggling, little black things, this one little guy I noticed was like kind of hopping up in the back and he would grab somebody, <laughs> one of his litter mates, and then kind of like pull them off the pile and then crawl up a little bit further and grab the next one, <laughs> pull them off the pile and crawl to the top of this little pile to get close to me. I picked him up and I mean, it was, it was over at that point. Done deal. That was my boy. So I bring him home. Uh, he, he lived for a decent lifetime, lifetime for a uh, Great Dane. He was about 10 and a half, 11 years old when he passed. Um, here's another picture of him, though. Okay. He was uh, hiding in the bushes. Full size. He was 165 pounds. He outgrew dog collars so quickly that I eventually gave up and started using some of my old belts. Um, his neck at one point was 18 inches around, um, when I measured it, this is another picture. So I'm six, two, I'm the guy in the background that you can see. Now granted, he did just leap. So his back feet are just off the ground, but you can't see my head and I'm holding a stick in my arm, not fully outright stretched outright, but still like at or higher than my head. He was a big boy. He could stand on his back legs, put his front paws on my shoulders, uh, and look at me like nose to nose. It's him laying in front of uh, a car of mine that I had. Uh, 
he was as wide as the car <laughs> when he laid down and stretched out. Here he is again, just kind of hanging out in the front, checking me out, making sure I was doing a good job, waxing his uh, chariot that he would ride around with. And believe it or not, I had this dog in that two-seat car, myself, another passenger, and a week's worth of groceries. My wife calls me Jenga Master, that's all I'm going to say. So this was my Scooby-Doo growing, uh, not just growing up, but into my you know teens and, and 20s. He um, was with me through a lot of awesome times and a lot of really not awesome times. So one of the things when I, he was my first Great Dane too of, of two. I've only had two in my lifetime. Been around multiple others. Um, but he is a direct tie-in to me when I'm reading those books. Because sometimes, um, I don't know if you do it, but if you're a pet parent, you probably give your pets voices. So like when you're saying something that you think they're thinking back to you, um, you give them a different voice. We have three different dogs. Each one has their own voice. When my wife and I talk to them or on their behalf, right? James's voice to me in my head was always Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Smart, right? Not as cowardly at all. <laughs> um, he scared quite a few people off of the porch <laughs> if you were a stranger and knocked on my front door. Um, but at the same time, it was that deep, that, I don't know, Dad, why, why are you doing that? Dad, are we going for that was That was my boy James. So when I read Scooby-Doo now, it's my guilty pleasure. Not only am I going back to my childhood and Saturday morning cartoons, I'm going back to one of my best loved best friends ever, whom I dearly, dearly miss. He's been gone a long time now. I still think about him pretty much every day. In fact, this little thing I'm showing you right here, it's like an old fashioned acrylic holder for, you're supposed to put it on a keychain, I guess. This hangs in my closet. So I literally see my boy still every day, every morning. And I miss him very much. But that's it for my guilty pleasure of this video. I have others. We'll be sharing those down the road. Please do comment. Tell me what you liked about this video. Tell me if there was something that you found that you could relate to. Tell me your own version of a pet from your past or that you tie into a comic that you read, maybe, or a movie that you love. Um, tell me whatever it is. Uh, you know, Give me any comments, questions, answers you know, that you have. Uh, we'd love to read them. We love getting ideas from you guys as well. We keep up with that. We do read through all of the ones that you put. Um, and if there's something in particular that you'd like us to see, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, come back and see my lovely wife. She will be back doing many more videos, some of which I'll be a part of again. And we look forward to hearing from you all again soon. Thanks.